Should a Christian be on a plant-based diet? My thoughts on this are absolutely. In these last days, I would even go as far as saying it is a sin to eat meat in general. I know, some of you are probably going to stop the video at this point and tell me how wrong I am. Trust me, I've heard all the arguments, but hear me out. First, I would like to point you to an older video I did last year on the Day of Atonement. I'd like you to watch that video for further information of this. So let's get to it. Here are the top five arguments. I'm going to answer these five points and then follow up with scriptures. They are pretty lame excuses as to why some people eat a rotting dead corpse. It is actually pretty disgusting in my opinion, but I digress. So first of all, I gotta have my protein. I need meat to get my protein. Really, that's a bold-faced lie, brothers and sisters. Protein comes from plants alone. I don't get secondhand protein from animals. I get it straight from the source. Look at buffaloes, elephants, or rhinos, for example. 100% plant-based diets. They are some of the biggest, strongest animals in the world. Not only this, but for another example, a can of beans has far more protein than a cheeseburger. And not just that, but has more fiber, less calories, no cholesterol, and of course, it is more filling. And not only that, but almost every disease and illness known to man can be traced back to eating flesh. However, virtually all diseases, including cancer and diabetes, can be reversed on a plant-based diet. Second point is, Jesus ate fish. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. First off, Jesus ate a piece of fish for one reason, and that was to prove that he has truly risen from the dead and is not some apparition. And furthermore, fish were much safer to eat back then. Nowadays, there is mercury in our fish, and our waters have been so polluted by our sinful natures. All of the junk being dumped in the ocean? When you eat fish, just remember all of that plastic being thrown in the waters every year you may just be consuming it. And third point is, God gave us permission to eat clean meats. Yes, he did. For two reasons. After the flood, there was no vegetation on planet Earth, and two, to shorten the sinful lifestyle of mankind. Notice before the flood, people were much taller and lived for eight or 900 years. We think today is a miracle to live past 80 or 90 years old. Before the flood, that was young. But also, God gave permission to eat clean meat, but it had to be prepared a specific way. You could not eat the blood or the fat of an animal, nor if they were strangled, torn up by another beast, or if it died of itself. For more information on that, you can study Genesis 9 verse 4, Leviticus 3 verse 17, Leviticus 17 verses 10 and 14, Deuteronomy 12 verses 16 and 23, Deuteronomy 14 verse 21, and Acts 15 verses 20 and 29. God repeats himself quite a bit, indicating that this must be important to us. Point four is that people like to twist Jesus' words in Mark 7 verse 15. Jesus isn't referring to the eating of food. He's talking about traditions of man. And in the context of this chapter, the Jews refusing to eat without washing their hands. And they basically condemned the disciples for eating bread without washing their hands. And the final point is in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. Once again, these verses are not too referring to eating meat. The Greek word for verse 3 for the word meat is broma, and it means foods. So here it's not specifically talking about meat, but notice what it says is. It says, commanding to abstain from meats or foods which God has, has created to be received with thanksgiving. Now in the next text also, God says that every creature of God is good. Now this word creature in the original language means any created thing. Notice that two conditions must be met before the creature can be received with thanksgiving. It must be sanctified first by the word of God and then by prayer. This means we must consult the Bible, the word of God, to see if something is acceptable as food. 
Has God indicated what is clean and permissible to be used as food? If not, then it cannot be sanctified or approved as an item of diet. Secondly, it must be sanctified by prayer. Now, a person could take some very obviously unclean food and pray over it without changing the nature of the food at all. By praying over a buzzard or moles or bats, we would not feel the assurance that cleansing or sanctification of the item has taken place. By following the admonition of the Bible, we will find certain foods clean and sanctified by God and other foods that are actually condemned and forbidden by God as food. So you can see by reading the entire text, we, get, we get a clear and beautiful picture of the principles to follow in eating and drinking to the glory of God. We also have to remember that we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy which temple ye are. But now that I have answered those five famous arguments, I would get on with the video. If people would actually study their Bibles, I could have actually got started already. Let's start with Genesis chapter 1 verses 29 through 31. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat meat meaning food and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day we are told clearly that god gave to mankind and animals alike anything that grows from the ground as food. It's self-explanatory, right? Before sin, there was no eating meat, period. A child can understand that. Let's jump forward to well after the flood when eating meat was permissible. Numbers chapter 11 verse 4 says, And the mixed multitude that was among them felt a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? During this time, God was leading his people to the promised land of Canaan. God gave them manna to eat, yet they didn't want it. They were crying for the flesh pots of Egypt. Let's continue on to see what happens. Verses 18 through 20. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against to tomorrow. And ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt, therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out of your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you. Because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And then verses 31 through 34. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and left them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they, gather, they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatava, because there they buried the people that lusted. God's people on their way to the promised land were given manna to eat instead of the diet of Egypt. They lusted for the diet of Egypt so much so that in the end they ate themselves to death and were buried there. God and Moses were mad at their rebellion. 
their example were to be an example unto us in these last days. We have been delivered from the bondage of sin, and we are on our way to the promised land. God wants to get us away from the diet of the world and put us on the heavenly diet of heaven, the original diet from Eden. The book of Daniel tells us in chapter 1 verse 8, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You see, some try to say that the king's meat was unclean meat or sacrificed to idols. But there was no evidence of that anywhere. However, if you jump down to verse 12 and 13, Daniel sets up a challenge. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Daniel only wanted vegetables and water. Nothing else. No steak, no hamburgers, no fried chicken, just pulse and water. Watch what happens. Verse 15 says, And at the end of the ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Now verses 19 to 21. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Daniel and his buddies refused the meat and they were found to be healthier and wiser than the rest of the children of Israel. Need not say more on this subject. I want to finish with one last verse. The book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. There will be no more pain or death. There won't be eating any more dead carcasses, brothers and sisters. The carnivorous animals won't even be eating flesh. You can read Isaiah 11 and 65 on that. So my appeal to you today is this. If there won't be any meat eating in heaven, then shouldn't you be preparing yourselves to live there now? Our lifestyles aren't going to just change, beloved. They need to change on this earth. God wishes above all things that thou shalt prosper and be in good health. Jesus is going to give us new glorified bodies. If we can't take care of these vessels we have now, we aren't taking care of those. Jesus is coming soon, beloved. This is John Tinsley with Everlasting Rock Ministries. And always remember, the truth never fails. God bless you.